What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the first episode in our coverage of Shopkeep, or as I like to call it, Shopapy Keep. I like this game a lot. I sat down very, very, I'm so skeptical anymore. When I play video games, I am just a cynical ass. I am the worst. Like, if you're into video games, don't hang out with me. I, I find it so hard to like anything these days. And yet, Shopapy Keep turns out to be a lot of fun. I played it for like six hours last night. I sat down at probably 7 and installed it and started playing it, just in between working on other things, and the next thing I knew it was 2.30 in the morning, and I was like, God, I have to go to bed like right now, I gotta go do a thing in the morning, there's all kind of stuff going on, it's a fun little game. So if you've never played Shopapy Keep before, Shopkeep is a game where it's exactly what it sounds like on the box, you run a shop, that adventurers come, it's kind of like Wrecketeer meets Black Friday. It's it's a interesting game. If you've never played Wrecketeer, you've probably never seen anything like it. But that's the only other game that I could actually say is close. The only difference is Wrecketeer is like an item management game plus JRPG. Whereas this is an item management game plus chaos and just shenanigans and fun. So I figured we do this as kind of like a one-off series. We've got a lot of stuff on the channel right now like leaving, coming, going, lots of short series. We're going to check it out, we're going to play it for a little while. If it turns out people don't really like it that much, well, we'll go do something else. But, I felt like playing today, so that's exactly what we're going to do. So, into my shop we go! Our shop right now, it's just got this back room thing right here. It's got like a middle back room, and then it's got like a main room. I have no idea. We're going to play around with it. Your base can be expanded in lots of different directions. You can have all kinds of fun stuff. The point of the game is to provide your customers with as many items as possible and make money! And make a Descrilla we shall. This is our shop right here, and in fact, I think my look sensitivity is a little bit too high right now. That's okay. This stuff on the wall is all the stuff that you can randomly unlock and you can play around with if you're into that sort of thing. That looks deliciously like a Zelda sword right there. It does. We got eggnog, which apparently is a big deal to somebody. I can't stand eggnog. We got our triple beam scales right there. For all the stuff that's off the books that we keep in the back room, you know? You come in, you order a double-double with extra special sauce and a side of biscuits. Take you in the back room. I'll get you set up with whatever you need. You can call me Dr. Splat. So in this first phase, we get our dance on because this music is banging. La, 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 la. I don't know. I like it. It makes me happy. So do they stay unlocked in between playthroughs? They do not. Okay, so there's things that we can place on the ground. If we press the 3 key, I'm going to try and make this a tutorial because it took me a while to figure out the game. There's little nuances and things that you have to learn about it. So, the 1 key. This is actually just like our hand key where we can take a look at all the stuff that can be bought, sold on this little list. You can click your skills to the side. Pay attention because it took me for it took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to realize that these K points, every time you level up, you get K points and you can spend them on stuff to make your shop better. So there's RPG like progression here. However, it took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to realize that you can shift these to the sides. I was like, wow, there isn't much to this game. I mean, we kind of just sell like the same three things over and over and again, don't we? Nope, you unlock them through here by leveling up. So, there it is. Just don't be an idiot like me and you'll probably be fine. You got your statistics, you can take quests if you're into those sorts of things. If you wanted to do some quests, you can line those up. What are these right here? Rarer wishes. If you want to do quests, you can put them up on the wall and when you complete them, I think something good happens. I've only completed a couple of quests and it was so busy and crazy when I was like completing them that I didn't really realize what I had going on. We need to order some wares, but the first thing we need to do is actually... Let me close this down real fast. We need to talk about the key. So the two key gives you your shop maintenance tools. So Q is going to allow me to use my broom to sweep up mud and dirt on the floor. The E key is going to allow me to use this hammer to fix all the random shelves and stuff inside my shop. When people come along, they knock it over, they break it. It is every... I, they should rename this game the retail experience. Because everything I've seen from this game is almost exactly like working in retail. I worked in retail for like a decade and it was the worst. I don't think we should send people to prison, we should send them to work retail. And I'm pretty sure that would turn them around pretty quickly. The four key is our weaponry, so people are going to come to our shop and they're going to try and steal our shit. And then we blast them with the lightning and then we give them a little bit of, yeah, that right there. A little bit of that action. Work out the forearms a bit. Maybe sometimes you get them with the combo, like you'd be like, stab, stab, oh you don't know me like that, lightning. And then they fall over and they're dead. The three key is going to be our building menu, and we actually just use the mouse wheel to scroll between all the things that we can build. We've got to unlock a lot of the stuff that can be built, and so for right now what I would suggest is we just start out with pedestals. That's pretty much it. So with our pedestals, you can rotate using the Q and E keys if that's what you want to do. I do hope the one thing that I've noticed so far is that the pedestals and also the tables seem to have a front side and a back side. 
but it doesn't tell you which is which. So sometimes if you're trying to set up like a really, really anal display like I do, where everything's lined up perfectly and all laser lined and the end caps are looking all good, sometimes you'll end up not being, it'll be just trial and error to get it to look pretty. It is what it is. I like things to look pretty. Some people don't. We just need a couple of these for right now. And so I'm just going to slap them on down. We'll probably just go with like, I don't know, our little boutique will probably just have like six of them maybe. Yeah, that seems okay. And we're not going to be able to do much. So this first episode is probably going to be slow. The chaos doesn't start until like day three or four. But for right now, the next thing we need to do is we need to order stuff. Health potions are pretty much the only thing we can afford right now. I could go in on something more expensive, but it is what it is. Once you place the order, it's going to take a little while to be delivered. Not really going to matter because nobody's going to be here anyway. So we go to the door, we press the E key, it opens on up, and it's day one. And what you'll notice is on each side of town, there's a little tunnel. People are going to start flooding into town and sort of contemplating what they want to buy. It doesn't really matter for right now. This first day is going to be sort of humdrum. Not a lot of stuff is going to happen. We basically have opened a shop that only has one product. We're kind of like a cell phone store right now. Really, really empty inside. Like five or six people just standing around. There's not really anything on display. You might have like one or two phone cases. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Our order is ready to go. Every time you order something or do anything, you end up with XP, which is going to let you level up, which then gives you K points, makes your life a little bit easier. You can also get achievement like I don't want to sell that for 10 gold. I actually need to adjust the price. So in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that we bought it for 10. We can choose how much we want to sell it for. I would strongly suggest. I normally start with like. I don't know, 15. It seems like the game has a pretty solid tolerance for marking things up by 150%. Just like an acquisition fee. And then we just leave those on the shelf and then we hang out for a little bit. And we talk about all the fun stuff that's going on in our lives. I worked retail for a really, really long time. Retail is not a fun place to be. And if you're in a retail point in your life, hang in there. My existence on YouTube and the fact that I get to do this for a living is perfect proof that like your life can turn around someday. And just like be better you know what I hated working in retail maybe you enjoy working in retail so if you enjoy working in retail you do you boo boo I don't hate on you come on you're gonna buy something he's gonna mess with me ah oh, you little bastard so there's three different types of customers there's looky loos those are people that come in they don't buy anything and they don't really do anything there's destructive customers like that guy who come in they knock your shit over and then walk out after insulting you. And then there's people that actually come in to buy stuff. So three different types of customers you got to deal with. But yeah, if you're working in retail right now and you enjoy it, you do you, boo-boo. I would never want to stop somebody from doing something that helps them actualize or be happy. But for me, retail was just the worst. It was just getting shouted at by angry middle class people all day, every day. Like, why are you so angry at me? I didn't even do anything to you. I'm trying to help you right now. And you were just out of your mind. That all changed when I became the manager, though. When I became the manager, I started dishing it back. I'd be like, oh, you're going to come in here, huh? You're going to come into my house and get all angry. Oh, you're about to find out. I turned into Randall Graves once I had a little bit of power. I mess with customers mercilessly. Hey, we sold a potion, which means that we can now put in an order. He bought my potion because he said I seemed like a nice person. Joke's on you. I'm a serial killer in my free time. Ha 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 ha. You've been Batemaned. All right, so let's go. Actually, I got to wait for this to... Damn. Only a quarter of our potion has been delivered for right now. So there's a couple different goals you can go for in this game. You can either, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff. My favorite is to go for a bunch of little stuff, like loads of health potions, loads of things that sell for like 20 gold. You only make like four gold off each one, but you've got such a massive volume in your store. I go for kind of the Costco effect where you make up the profits just on like people coming in and buying in bulk because there are little skills that you can purchase that will force customers to buy multiple things. Like if they buy one purchase, it gives them like a 50-50 chance to buy another thing when they're inside your shop. It's pretty sweet. Let's put these back on the shelf real fast and get them ready to go. Nobody wants to buy my health potions. Come forth and see my light show, civilians. I am the hedge wizard of Nur. Come forth and look upon my fluids for your perusal, purchase, and consumption. Put them inside your body. Watch as I dazzle you with magics. Which are in no way dangerous. There's no need. I've set the town on fire like three or four times. Yes, but that's only to help out with the fact that I think that the scientists in this area, they haven't really noticed. You dirty bastards got mud all over my floor. You've put spoticles all over everything around here. Why? Hmm. Now I know how my mom felt when I was a little kid and I busted up in the house with my shoes on and got everything muddy. This is upsetting. Here, let's clean up some of this dirt and make it look a little bit nicer in here. There we go. 
The Hedge Wizard of Nuh. Come forth. But yeah, I've told them that they should invest in lightning rods just in case one of my spells goes awry. And yet, they don't do it. It's like, I feel like I warn them what's going to happen. Like, I have magical wizard powers. Be aware that when I have magical wizard powers, things are occasionally going to go wrong and things are going to get blowed up. It is what it is. Sometimes fire happens. Sometimes fire happens. It is what it is. I don't make the rules. I simply live by them. Or at least alongside them. Man, nobody's feeling our store right now. It could be due to the fact that I'm standing at the front door wielding weaponry with a hand that looks like it was kissed by the thunder god Thor. That might- I wouldn't go into this store. He's wielding a weapon and I'm not even inside yet. Makes me a little paranoid about what's gonna happen. Are you gonna buy shit or are you just gonna knock it over after tracking dirt up in here? Ah, oh, you follicle failing bald bastard. Alright, let me put this back on my shelf. Dick. That's what you are. Dick. This game needs a middle finger. You should be able to mess, like, the people that come into your store just, like, break shit and walk out. You should be able to just be like, ah, and light them up. Hmm. It's a beautiful day in the winter with the snowflakes falling from the sky. You know what goes well with a crisp winter morning? Or a crisp winter day? A health potion. I bet y'all would be feeling way better if you came in and got a health potion. Health potions! I totally didn't make these out of the leftovers from dinner last night. They're totally gonna heal you. I'm a snake oil vendor right now. Life is difficult when you're a snake oil vendor. It is what it is. It can't really be helped that much. But what are you gonna do? Sometimes you're a snake oil salesman. Sometimes you're a sword salesman. It just so- Oh, this guy knows. There he is, my green-shirted, jack-booted friend. Get up in here. I know you want this health potion right here. It's got your name on it. It's got your name on it. What's your name? His name is Jude Zemitis. Zemitis sounds like, like an infection of the foot. Like, can you go for a run today? Nah, my Zemitis is acting up. I'll probably leave that right there. I just offended like a thousand people from some place I've never heard of who have the last name Zemitis. It's like, hey man, come on. I come from a proud line of warriors. We Zemituses have always conducted ourselves with honor. And you come in here just disrespecting us like this guy looks shifty right here. This guy's up to something. Sean Rigoro. Oh, look at that. We're making sales right now. It might be worth it. That guy's name is Atherton. That's a pretty classy name right there. That's the name of the guy that stabs Malcolm in Firefly. Atherton, what was his last name? I should know this. I'm a big Firefly fan. Somebody told me the other day that Firefly was not that great, and I was like, you need to rethink those words before I kick you out of my house. You need to rethink those words, son. What are you going to tell me next, that Star Wars is overrated? What, are you going to come up in here and say that Star Trek sucks too? You are making me sad at the moment, my friend. I need to order some more stuff. Let's go all in on some leather gloves. Let's... Let's up the ante right now. Let's see if we can sell something a little bit larger. Because I don't know if you knew this, but 50% of 40 is better than 50% of 10. Technically, I mean, if you're looking at it linearly and multiplicatively, it's, you know, 50% is 50%, I guess. you got to make up with the bulk. But still, you get what I mean. You get what I mean. Because it costs us more to purchase it, so... You see what I mean? The conversion, it's kind of... Kind of the same. We're just... We're moving more product at the same time. What's up, red shirt? I see you survived your last adventure. You know you want to come up in here and get that health potion so you can survive the next one. Boom! There it is! There's my guy. There's my dude. Let's order two more of these. Place that order. Now we're up and moving. So the daytime tends to be the most intense. Lots of stuff going on during the daytime. We should be able to get 58 gold out of that one. We bought it for 40. Get 58 out. That's actually pretty good. Ah, you didn't want it. He's just coming in to be a looky-loo. Get on out of here before I declare shenanigans on you. How come nobody has hair around here? Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. It's because of the health potions I've been selling. They have side effects. I don't put them on the bottle, though. Wait, this guy's got hair. This guy's got hair. What's up, man? Oh, he's got hair, too. This guy's got, like, a stylish comb over. He's got, like, a... I don't know. His hair appears to be dripping down his face. It's a little worrisome. Obvious, obviously, graphical superiority is not this game's strong point. However, it is a fun game to play. Are my potions here yet? Oh, they are. Potions in the back room in my chest. Gonna put them on the shelf. They're the best. There we go. Aha! 
Look upon my wares. You should probably, as you play the game, you should constantly start to cycle in bigger products. It's a good plan, and it's something that I think will make your life a little bit easier. Like, as soon as you have enough money for gloves, or like a table and a sword, you should start selling more expensive stuff, because that's the best way. Piotr Smith. Oh, damn it, he stole from me. Hold on. Got him. Zapped his ass. Get dealt with, punk. Get dealt with. That's what happens when you steal from the Edge Wizard of N. Oh, he bought my gloves. That's amazing. Good. So let's go ahead and do this then. We'll put in another order. And then I gotta sweep up this dead body because... Go figure, people don't want to shop in a place where there's a dead guy. I don't know why that is. Oh, we sold another health potion too. Damn, I would have bought another one if I'd known I was gonna make a little bit more money. Arrgh. And so typically the morning phase is very, very slow. The day phase tends to be a really, really busy one. The evening phase can swing either direction in my experience, but for the most part it tends to be kind of slow. If I could sell that potion, that would be fantastic. We don't have that much product left, so if we could just get it up and out of here. Where is this delivery at? Nobody's going to steal from me, are they? Alright, good. I don't want to get stolen from. Every now and again there's like bandit invasions, like you'll get attacked by barbarians or something like that. Shit gets wild in this game, I don't know. It gets crazy pretty quickly. Just keep your eye on the prize and keep hoping for a win. Alright, so we need to make some more orders. I'm going to say that I'm going to take three more health potions real quick and just put in the orders for those. We've got about 70 bucks worth of merchandise on the shelves right now. Let me go ahead and clean up the floors real fast. The nighttime music in this game, it makes me feel sad and introspective. It makes me feel like the shopkeeper sitting there sadly looking outside while everybody else has a family and stuff. And all he has is like his wares. Maybe he'll adopt some neighborhood children and allow them to live in the shop and they can be his building kinder. <laughs> building kinder. Oh god. Dwight Schrute is one of my favorites. My building kinder. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, he's one of the main characters of The Office. The American one. He's this guy who's been- oh, they've sold everything. Jesus. Okay, so... That leaves me with enough money for two pairs of gloves. So let's escalate this thing. We're making profits. I'm trying anyways. Trying. And what I want to do with these is I'm going to kind of make- I want to set them up and make them look good. Now the nice thing is, when you get done with the day, you're allowed to like rearrange things as much as you want and make it look pretty. There goes another 15. See, we're starting to develop customers right now. Making relationships. Pointing swords at this guy because I think he's up to something. I'm watching you, green shirt. Watching you, green shirt. Come in here and knock my stuff over. Punk. Walk out. You know you will. You ain't gonna stay. You can't call the police or anything either, so we're like the Judge Dredd of mercantile sales. We have to punish people harshly for stealing from us. Our family might starve. Anyways, Dwight Schrute is this... He grew up at the Pennsylvania Deutsch. That's what they're making the joke about the entire time, so I don't know if people know this in Europe. But in the United States, we have, like, these enclaves of people that have lived the same way since, like, the 1600s. And they still speak, like, ancient medieval German and stuff like that. Like, people from Germany that study the German, or linguists in general, I guess, they come here to study the version of German that they speak. And basically, they're called the Amish or the Mennonites. The Amish are the Pennsylvania Deutsch. But anyways... He was raised by a family that was Pennsylvania Deutsch, and so he's constantly... You could tell that the creators of the show had a good time coming up with all these ridiculous traditions and stuff. That, like, they're super goofy, but he's always coming up with random things like Bilden Kinda. <laughs> Bilden Kinda, the joke there is that he doesn't have any kids, and so, like, he says that in his society, people that don't have kids but they have a lot of money, sometimes they adopt a bunch of children that just, like... Or no, it was the landlords. The landlords of apartment buildings sometimes look after the children that live in the apartment because they're in the apartment complex because they're they're building kinda and otherwise they don't have any children or something like that. It's funny in context. Out of context, not quite as funny. Never mind, I quit. Let's place another order, shall we? We are profitable. We are very, very profitable today. I would like to make another couple sales so that maybe we could expand our sales floor. We might be, if I can sell just like a pair of gloves or something, it might have been smarter for me to sit on my cash for now. You coming in? Fine then, I'm going to shoot lightning past you then. That's what you get. Look at me as I swing my sword in a charismatic fashion. You too can swing a sword like this if you purchase my health potions. Oh, you don't really care much? Well, I mean, I, oh, dude, did it, did it glitch through the wall? Oh, that sucks. No. Oh, that's so whack. That's actually a pretty good argument for why I, put, I shouldn't put things up against the wall. 
That's pretty deeply upsetting right there, because that was an expensive item. Oh, man. So what happens, there's a wall on the other side of this, and the clipping is not so good yet. The game's in early access, so take from that what you will. However, after we b knock down this wall, our gloves will be on the opposite side of the wall. Disappointing. But... Take it with a grain of sand. I guess we've dematerialized. I'll probably move these shelves then. Just to avoid that happening in the future. Because that's actually pretty worrisome. There we go. Full stock again. Ready to go. Who wants to buy some shit? Somebody get in here. This is shit that you need. This is shit that you want. This is the shit you gotta take versus the shit you wanna take. Those are two different needs. Sometimes you got that bloaty feeling in your stomach. You just gotta get. We're at level two right now. Well, what can I? What can I purchase with my level two points? Skillses. We got twenty six k points. Probably not gonna be able to do much. Actually, no. We can use anti haggle twice, and so we can acquire quite a bit more gold. I could have got plus one item too. That probably would have been a smart idea. So the choices here is you got anti haggle, which these are three different levels of it. They make you earn more money on top of whatever you sell. And then you've also got the, let's see here, you've got the plus one item, which means that if somebody buys something in your shop, it increases the chance they'll do a second purchase. You've got the entry fee, which means that everybody that comes in has to pay you money. Rich customers makes you able to raise your fees by quite a lot. These are going to increase the amount of items you can produce and buy and order. It's also going to change the types of people that will come into your shop, so you can get different adventurers like druids, warriors, rogues, things like that to come in. These right here will change just random combative stuff, so it'll make thieves less likely. It'll give you prisons so that you can put, like, whenever the thieves steal something, they get locked inside of a magic prison. Stuff like that. And then this over here will actually increase the amount of stuff that you can produce, like shelves and things of that nature. Probably a pretty good purchase for right now, so that we don't end up with a shop that looks like it's also just stocked with pedestals. We don't want to get a, we don't want to give into the pedestal lobby. They've been barking up that tree for a long time, and I just don't want to deal with them. A table is Bainty Cinco. Man, that sucks. Bainty Cinco coins, and we don't have that many, so I'm just going to have to open back up right now. All right, that's going to be the end of our first episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the first episode of Shopapy Keep. Shopkeep. I will see you all in the next episode. Hi to everybody. I hope you enjoy this game. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're going to have a good time. It's pretty expansive. We can build the shop up and make it huge. There's all kinds of stuff we can buy along the way to make this all work better. And I look forward to sharing that experience with all of you. Hi, do, and I'll see you all there.